Hello, everybody. Valentin Totoro from Ilya here. Today, we're going to look at the workflow type architecture for agent teams. Okay. One of the new advances with 25D is the ability to also create a workflow type architecture. We've looked at supervisor types, which were there in 25C, sequential, where you have an agent um, flowing data from its output to the next input agent worker. Workflow takes this to a whole new level. So we're going to look at creating a workflow agent. These, of course, have also a different look and feel to them. And we'll, we'll create one off the on the fly. Uh, you'll see that these are far more like a OIC integration flow, where you would have things like variables set at the top. You'll have different LLM or worker agents being called and performing different tasks and then taking different routes as necessary. So there's a lot of power to this where supervisor and sequential uh, don't have the capability to branch off and do tasks kind of on the side. Um, you know, the supervisor is really supervising the work of multiple agents. Sequential is taking the output from one and flowing it to another. The workflow type takes this to a whole new level and you have granular control over when a vector is read from the database uh, when something is written to the database, you have different uh, LLMs and agents that can perform different work and then coalesce all that information uh, from those different paths into an output that then gets you know relayed back from the initial user intent or actions performed against the system. So this this really is a true agent framework now within Fusion applications um, in 25D. Okay, so that ability to to be able to to do splits maybe you want to split the work uh, amongst different agents uh, or different llms for that matter so one could be performing the exact same task as the other right this, this branching off could be actually in parallel and then maybe an analyzer at the end will say oh this llm actually did it in this one let's leverage this answer uh, and then respond back to the user. So you have different branching strategies and a lot of kind of architecture has to happen when you want to get into this level of, of um, LLM uh, agent creation. Okay, so let's create one off the, on, the, on the fly. So we'll do add, again, maybe we'll call this a workflow agent type. Then it's going to create the, the code automatically. We're going to tie it to a family and product. And then as you see here, this is the new type dropdown and the new option here of workflow okay the maximum interactions and of course we want to give it a description that's better than just this obviously we want a little more we'll choose what the initial um, agent llm is we can do gpt5 min, mini for now um we, you have security you have triggers when will that actually uh workflow be triggered so there's a kind of a webhook for that trigger you're able to manipulate variables kind of on the top level or you can actually declare variables as, as a type you also have error handling. This is something new with workflow type. It wasn't on the other ones where if something were to go wrong, you can actually immediately email uh, a participant or, or uh, you know, your agent studio admin for that matter. OK, so we'll go ahead and we'll create this. And as you can see now, you also have a, a different look and feel based than the supervisor or the sequential. This one actually has nodes. So maybe the first thing we want to do is we want to set some variables. Maybe you, know, you want to declare variables at the top of your test. Um, so what you can do here is add variables, you know, call it var1, and give it some kind of value and create it. Okay, um, That's one thing you can do in here. You can also call business objects. Okay, you can actually call an agent or an LLM. So right here, we want to say we're, we're going to call it LLM so that we know, you know, based on the user's intent and the prompt, uh, we'll give it instructions that please parse this and send to the correct stream. Okay, uh, temperature, this uh, controls how creative or analytical the actual uh, LLM is, right? If you want to be very creative and give you a very abstract answer, you can give it that. Or if you want it to be very analytical, you can set a temperature. I'm going to just try to give it a temperature that's in the middle. You also have the capability to, um, if you have variables defined, so maybe you set all the temperatures for all your LLMs kind of at the top, as if you were you know, declaring any kind of program, you declare your variables kind of at the top, at least the starting ones. Um, you can use those, and it would actually use a variable that's controllable instead of just a static number and then the output can be an actual schema or uh, properties that you can define as well 
And so you'd create that and it'll actually start adding these little tiles um, or little icons, GUI icons to uh, the overall tree. From there, maybe you have a conditional statement that this branches based on the request, okay? It's gonna give the code. And then here, of course, we wanna leverage whatever that output of that LLM was and feed it um, into um, the, the next level, okay? I don't think I have any, oh, there it is. And then the output, we didn't specify an output. So obviously it's gonna be empty. I'm gonna do the input, which is incorrect, but just to show you the branching capabilities, right? So we, we get, you gotta do work on each level for the next level to, to be appropriate and to be used. So we, we would use the output. Uh, the input was already predefined. So I grabbed that variable, but now based on that, it will take one of two, two branches. If it's true, it's gonna come here. If it's false, it will go here. Till now, I've been using the little pluses, but now it's a little easier to actually do a plus. Um, uh, and you kind of see when you hover over one of the lines, you can do a plus and then invoke um, kind of the same set of features, but it's a little easier to control here than um, dropping these um, onto the, the mapper itself. Okay, if it is true, we can do various things. Maybe we want to grab some business objects. Maybe we want to split it one more time. So we can have sub-branches and sub-branches and sub-branches if you wanted to. Okay, maybe this is branch two because there's other uh, changes that we also want to do. Okay, I'm going to again tie it to one of the nodes. The temperature, great. Yeah, even more unique name, Valentine. There you go. Right, so you can see an even more advanced structure. And then each one of these might have agents that are being called. Okay, and you can, of course, like the other ones, you can call agents. Uh, I usually like to start with selecting the product and then fit and then selecting the agent and then I'll actually define the name. So maybe we have an agent for um, benefits analysis. Okay, that's the agent worker we're calling, but you can actually specify and call this just the benefits then analyzer. Okay, and of course you can specify again input variables, output specifications, which LLM this one uses because you can actually prescribe various LLMs, this one just using the default LLM because that's what's prescribed within the agent team, will create it and now you'll actually see that it's gonna branch once, it's gonna branch a second time, call that agent, and then maybe on this one, after it does the agent, maybe it does an email send. So then we specify an email send or maybe it writes something to the vector database. Okay, this is these are great capabilities if you are trying to call the specific index um, in the con content and the content type, you can actually specify that. Um, you can do document processing. So if, say an example, a document um, is inputted by the user, you first want to check that it, it is it in or in the database. If it isn't, then you actually want to process the document, write it to that database, um, and then be able to do RAG calls from that, right? So based on the user's intent, it vectorizes the request, it goes against the 26 AI database to that specific index, pulls the relevant um, chunks from that, bundles that all up, and does something with it with the next step and answers the user's intent from there. Okay. Again, you can make these as complex as you wanted. Obviously, too complex of a system is a little trickier to um, to test, uh, but there's sometimes a need for a very complex system with multiple branches. But this is really kind of the next evolutionary step to 25D and the AI agent studio, being able to create these branches to, to flow data uh, and then maybe coalesce the data at the end based on various calls to get an even better response and a more de deterministic response uh, with all the safeties and, and guards in place at each of your steps. And again, you always wanna leverage the evaluation and monitor, set up your testing criteria, the expected results, run it through a couple of evaluation steps and also look at um, the adversarial testing that the LLM did and see what kind of suggestions uh, it might have to how you approach the agents and the structure. Again, very high level, definitely always test your agents afterwards. And hopefully this video was useful in showing you kind of the basics of a workflow type within AI Agent Studio. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.